Main Street Media News outlet to cover the disturbing and curious story of one Raymond Epps. You know, he's the guy that's been caught on camera for a couple of days there before January 6th, inspiring everyone to go into the Capitol. We're going to storm the Capitol. That's where the problem is. We're going to go into the Capitol. So finally, someone in the Main Street Media News outlet, a big one too, CBS News 60 Minutes, they covered the Ray Epps story. That's the good news. The bad news is it was a hagiography. They turned this guy into a saint. They, well, it's propaganda. Here, take a look. Put it out there. I'm probably going to go to jail for it. Okay? Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. No! Peacefully. Fed, 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 fed. To some in the crowd, Epps seems so over the top, he must have been a government agent, a Fed sent to entrap them. When you said, we have to go into the Capitol, we have to go into the Capitol, what, what were you thinking? I said some stupid things. My thought process, we surround the Capitol, we get all the people there. I mean, I had, I had problems with the election. It was my duty as an American to peacefully protest along with anybody else that wanted to. The next morning, January 6th, Epps was out by the Washington Monument, still focused on a single goal. We are going to the Capitol, where our problems are. It's that direction. Yeah, and he's the guy who never spent a day in jail, where we still have people right now who are in jail who haven't actually had an official trial yet from January 6th in solitary confinement. Joining us right now to maybe unpack this and explain this in some way is a former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva. Joe, I mean, there's two angles to this. Let's start with the media angle. Boy, oh boy, uh, 60 minutes. Uh, you couldn't have orchestrated or scripted this better, this thing. Uh, pretty embarrassing. Uh, they should change their name to 60 seconds because that's about all the attention span anybody's going to have for them. Uh, Whatever Ray Epps' role was, it has not been thoroughly or completely explained. Uh, the, the public record that exists on him and what he did is unacceptable, and there is simply no good answer right now about what his role was. One thing is for sure, he has not been treated the same way as other people who were peacefully there have been treated, and I think it's pretty disgraceful. Yeah, and one thing's very curious, you know, if you remember the days immediately following January 6th, uh, the Justice Department, the FBI, they put out a whole string of photographs of people who were wanted for questioning, you know, America's right. most wanted. Uh, and Ray Epps, of course, naturally, understandably, logically was one of them. And then it disappeared. Like within 24 or 48 hours, they said, oh, never mind, this guy, we don't need to worry about him. Joe, you've been around the Justice Department and FBI investigations. Uh, what on earth could have changed in such a short time that they could immediately have decided this guy wasn't worth questioning? Well, what's interesting about this, Larry, is when I was the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia during the Reagan administration, I was directly responsible for monitoring the activities of the Metropolitan Police, the Secret Service, the FBI, during major demonstrations. And we had them by the dozen. Um, nothing like this, such as pictures going up on a website and then coming down, would have happened without my knowledge. Uh, and so the question is, what did the U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia now, Joe Biden's U.S. attorney, know about this? What did he do about it? And why hasn't he been called to testify before the House of Representatives about all of this stuff? I mean, this guy has been responsible for some of the worst treatment of people in the criminal justice system that I have ever seen. And yet yeah. you never see him mentioned. Anybody barely knows his name. And he probably has any answer to a lot of these questions. Joe, you mentioned testifying before Congress. Of course, we had almost two years of an incredibly well-financed January 6th Select Committee. <laughs> and I mean, regardless of what Ray Epps' actual involvement was in the events of January 6th, the fact that he's caught on video so blatantly inspiring people to storm the Capitol and enter the Capitol, they questioned him behind closed doors, Joe. I would think, you know, a big part of the 60 Minutes show was how there's all these conspiracy theories about Ray Epps. Well, one way to get rid of conspiracy theory is to have transparency. Why would they never question this man and have him answer questions on camera in prime time like all the other witnesses they had? Because they didn't want to. It was a very selective, it was a select committee, okay? It was very selective in the way it put information out. 
anything that was detrimental to their to their basically their lie about what happened that day. There's no doubt that some people there broke the law and should be prosecuted. But the generic theme about an overthrow of the government was ludicrous. There were there were nobody with any guns storming the Capitol that day. The real story that day was the horrendous security, the absence of any proper security to protect the House and the members. And that was Nancy Pelosi's fault and Chuck Schumer. So the bottom line is, whatever the committee wanted to hide because it was not consistent with their story, they hid. So they hid Ray Epps, just like they did everything else that people wanted to know more about. Joe, while I've got you, I, I would be negligent, I mean, almost criminally negligent, if I didn't ask you to, to comment on the events last week, the revelations, or uh, frankly, confirmations of what you've been telling us for the last several months about the investigation into Hunter Biden. Uh, let's start first with the whistleblowers out of the IRS and the FBI who have said that they're stymied. They've completed their investigations, but something's stalled either at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware or with Merrick Garland, the Attorney General. You've been telling us about this. Where does it stand now, do you think, and what's going to break, if anything? Well, first of all, this is the kind of case uh, in the Hunter Biden case which should have been resolved in n less than a year. Uh, a a first-year assistant United States attorney could have gone through all these records, worked out a, a prosecution, and either indicted or gotten a plea deal. What's going to happen now is it's fairly obvious that they've leaked the fact that uh, Hunter Biden's lawyers are going to meet with the David Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware, is that there's going to be a really sleazy, low-rent plea deal worked out with a couple of tax counts and maybe a gun charge, uh, probably no prison time, a substantial fine, maybe probation, maybe, maybe house arrest. But they're going to do everything they can to avoid any charges involving the Foreign Agents Registration Act, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, the bribery and conspiracy laws which involve Joe Biden and kickbacks to him with money coming through his family. So this is the reason this case has taken so long is fairly obvious. And the IRS whistleblower will 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 prove that conclusively. This has been a cover up by Merrick Garland and the deputy attorney general Lisa Monaco to keep this case from going forward in a meaningful way. And so now the fix is in and the IRS whistleblower, I hope he gets to testify. Uh, will show us exactly what we've already known for years. A case like this doesn't take five years. Joe, maybe I'm naive, but I got to think even a plea deal like that would be incredibly damaging to the president's reelection uh, prospects here. Are, are they agreeing to this deal with Hunter Biden's lawyers, the Justice Department, uh, to pave the way for Joe Biden to run? Or is it really more of a trade off? Listen, all right, we're going to make this go away, but it's time for you to step down, Mr. Biden. I, I think they're doing it to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to get it off the plate and to protect Joe Biden. The bottom line is they're doing this so he doesn't have to issue a pardon. Uh, ah. That's what this is about. Because make no mistake about it, even if this conviction, go, if this plea agreement goes through, and even if Joe Biden runs again, he will pardon his son before he leaves office so that this entire thing will be a joke and a nullity. A pardon is coming. It's just coming a little later. It's not coming now. Finally, Joe, just a minute left, but I'm sure you've seen the testimony of Attorney General Merrick Garland. He was asked point blank by Senator Chuck Grassley, uh, can the U.S. attorney bring charges if he has the evidence out of Delaware? Is there any impediment at DOJ? And Merrick Garland swore, oh, he's on his own. He's independent. He can do it. Did Merrick Garland lie under oath? I believe he did. I don't What's think there's the any doubt about it. Either what can that, be done about or he doesn't that. I mean, if you're Chuck Grassley right now. Well, I mean, you know, the, 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 he, there are so many people in this administration that need to be impeached. He's just on the short list. I guess that's fair enough. We got Mayorkas, we got Merrick Garland, we got hell, why not just go right up to the top? Uh, Joe, it's always great to talk with you. It's a busy day, and I appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Larry. Great to be with you. He's the best. Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. attorney during the mighty Reagan administration. It's a busy night. I hope you stick with us because there's more to come on O'Connor tonight here on Salem News Channel.